What I want from Love Live Nijigasaki High School Idol Club. So we've got another Love Live series coming out soon. Very soon, like within a couple weeks of this video going up, so I need to get this done. But first, a small detour. A year ago, I made a review of the Revue Starlight Relive mobile game. It wasn't a very good review, and that may not seem very relevant to this video at all. But I bring this up because the same company, Bushiroad, or Bushiro, published Love Live School Idol Festival All-Stars. And the games clearly share a lot of the same DNA in equipable accessories, the character upgrade system, and the gacha draw style. Luckily, Love Live All-Stars has 3D character models in the menus. I was not a fan of the live 2D system Relive used. But All-Stars has a lot more to do with Relive than the first School Idol Festival game. But what does this have to do with Nijigasaki High School? Everything. Well, this is not a review of the All-Stars game itself. Most of what we know about the characters from Nijigasaki is from this mobile game, including the highlight of the show, the music. Music. Music is kind of one of the main appeals of Love Live, and I am hopeful for some more bangers. Though this point is pretty self-explanatory. So far, my favorite songs from Nijigasaki have been Rina's solo songs. Unfortunately, while I usually find some of my favorites in the subunit songs, I think those have been the weakest of all the songs released so far. But I'm just hopeful for more music in general, so I don't have much to say here. And I have no idea if any of the songs that are already released will even be used in the anime. More characterization for the characters I don't like yet. The biggest problem Nijigasaki has from only existing in the mobile game so far is that I can't really distinguish some of the characters. Love Life has always had this problem in the mobile games. It just immediately throws every character at you without really giving them time to be properly introduced. And there's just too many characters to actually remember them all as individuals. The same thing happened to me in the original School Idol Festival game, which I played before watching the anime because of Siva Gunner meme mashups, but that's another story. And most of Muse were pretty interchangeable. I could only tell them apart by hair colors, so I could literally not tell Ren and Hanukkah apart. Meanwhile, the anime introduced Muse characters a few at a time, which worked much better. Nichigasaki seems like the characters were designed to be very different in a few ways, and only some of them have worked so far. Early in the mobile game story, there is much more musical emphasis on small groups and solo songs. This goes as far as the actual franchise production. There's a lot of new talent working on the songs, instead of just Akihara, who in real life wrote practically every single song for Muse and Aqua. This is the welcome change as the musical direction of the series had become pretty stale, and the new songs sound fresh even if I'm not in love with most of them. But as this is characters I want more characterization for, here are the characters I just don't really like yet. Ayumu. According to the Love Live wiki, in contrary to previous Love Live projects, the lead character isn't a Leo and doesn't have the orange image color. So yeah, um, she's at least slightly different from the other protagonists. Other than that, I mean, she's cheerful and optimistic and ends up bringing people together to be school idols. There's not a huge amount distinguishing her yet. Kasumi. She is currently my least favorite character. She has the hair color designated her as the airhead friend, and she tries to be really cutesy like Nico. Guess who I didn't like at all at first in the original Love Live. The difference is that Nico had an attitude to set her apart and eventually good character development, while currently Kazumi is just annoying with nothing at all really redeeming or interesting about her. Karen and I. I had to look up their names because these are two nothing characters. After playing all of the story there is to date in School Idol Festival All-Stars, I can tell you absolutely nothing about them. They've made zero impact on me. So they have nowhere to go but up. The self-insert character to be interesting. Nijigasaki has an interesting addition to the cast and a manager character who does not perform with the group. The mobile games have always had this role for the player character, but for Nijigasaki they are an actual character in the anime as well. I hope they come off as an actual character rather than a self-insert position for fans, which is sort of what the producer and the idol master always seemed like to me. I just hope with all these characters there's not some characters left out to dry with very little to do in the story this time. But expanding the cast beyond nine characters just makes it seem all the more likely. Speaking of characters that will be heavily involved in the plot, the same characterization for the characters I do like. Spoiler warning for the mobile game story, by the way. I have no idea 
how much of the mobile game story is reused in the anime, but uh, spoiler warnings anyway. Setsuna and Shiariko. Some people like Setsuna because she likes watching anime. That is not my reason. I like Setsuna because she is by far the best developed character in the mobile game. There is one area in which the story really shines and was far better than I expected. And I hope these story events also occur in the anime because they are far more interesting than the rest. Setsuna is the student council president because it's impossible to write a love live story without a main character being the student council president, apparently. But an outside character challenges her in an election and wins, and sees the school idol club as a waste of time and wants it shut down. This is the first time Love Live is an actual antagonist in the story, rather than just a threat to the school as a whole. And Shioriko Mufune is a really well-written antagonist, because she's popular and effective and has clear goals. Shioriko is the best realized character in Nejigasaki High School, and she's not one of the school idols. Or at least that's what I wrote when I started this draft months ago. Now Shioriko is confirmed to end up joining the group in the end anyway, which is far too much like previous entries in the series. There's nothing wrong with a main character who isn't an idol. Yes, I know there's the player character it's the manager too, but I mean someone who isn't part of the group. But still, this particular story was just very well written, and I would like to see it in the anime anyway. Also, Shioriko has the same voice actor as Nana Daiba from Review Starlight. Banana, Banana ice. ice. I want to see Kanata's sister, also known as Acknowledge the End Girls Backstories. Kanata Kano, Shinzuku Osaka, and Emma are the Ascended End Girls from School Idol Festival. They were not my favorites, but at least they're not the utter trash they could have gone with. Yes, I have strong opinions on a big mob of characters who barely had any personality. I hope Kanata's sister Haruka, who I liked more than Kanata, shows up at some point, because assumedly she's still in Tokyo at their previous school. In fact, if a bunch of other N girls had cameos and a flashback to Kanata's previous school, that would be great fan service. Emma, meanwhile, is a foreign student who isn't blonde and half Japanese, so she has a lot of potential to be a unique character in the series. Or she's just going to be the one with big boobs for this group. I do enjoy that she has often been drawn larger than the other Nijigasaki members, and I don't mean her chest size. I mean that she actually comes off as a big, bulky European girl, even if everyone looks like anime characters and not any particular ethnicity. She's not fat or tall, she's just big. Shinzuku, unfortunately, is just another nothing character so far, who never made an impression on me as an end girl and continues to not make an impression on me as a main cast member. Bonus point, Rina. This is not a real point, but to be honest, the previous wasn't really much of a point either. I'm just closing out my thoughts here, and I had one character I didn't talk about yet. Rina! I did not talk about Rina yet. She isn't a character I don't yet like, and she isn't an N-girl. Rina has huge potential as a character. She's an even bigger gimmick than any character before her, but has the potential to be really sweet and likable. Or she could just end up as an annoying gimmick. She also apparently has a lot of robot gizmos and tech knowledge around her as well. So, she's the character I am the most hopeful for in the cast. That's all my thoughts on Nijigasaki before it comes out. I started this video months ago and never finished it, and uh, now I need to get it out before the series starts so I can go back to finishing up other projects, like my last Familiar of Zero review that I should have been done with a month ago, or a video that's Christmas-themed so uh, and that needs to get done before the holidays. I wanted to get a video about Love Live out because for better or for worse, I'm still following the series, even if I don't have any big sweeping opinions on it yet. Thank you for watching, have a nice day.